Hey everybody! If you're anything like me, uh, you're a 2D artist looking to use Blender to enhance the quality of their work. And if you're anything like me, then uh, you really are interested in having 3D objects that look a bit more 2D. You might be interested in having that contrast between 2D and 3D in the same scene, but that's not what I'm going to focus on today. What I'm really going to focus on is how to get 2D looking lines inside of your 3D scenes. And I primarily have four ways of going about it. So let me render this out real quick so you can see what I've got going on here. So the four ways I've seen about going about it are the inverted hull method, freestyle lines, line art modifiers, and fresnels. Now all these come with their own advantages and disadvantages, and I'm going to go through those real quick. First, let me show the inverted hull method. So the inverted hull method, basically what you're doing is taking your geometry, expanding it, cutting it in half, and then turning that cut in half piece black. So let me explain that by doing a little example. It'll be a bit easier to wrap your head around. What we're going to do is go down to our materials panel. First, let me turn everything to material preview mode. We're going to go to our materials panel, create a new material, which is just going to be the base material for our mesh. We're going to create another material after that, and we're going to take that one and we're going to set it to be black. There we go, two materials, first one white, second one black. Cool. If you want to, you can name these appropriately. I'm just going to leave them as your default names. But if you're doing bigger projects, it's always good to organize. We're going to go back to our modifiers panel. We're going to add a solidify modifier. And what this is going to do is extend our mesh outwards. We're going to take this and we're going to set it to a negative value. So. When we set it to a negative value, you can see our mesh starts to expand. What we're going to do is set it to flip normals by going down to this normals panel right down here, hitting flip. We're going to go down to our materials panel one more time, make sure we're on our second material, scroll down, and under settings, we'll find this option called back facing cullings. We're going to check that on, go back to our modifiers panel. We're going to hit materials under our solidify modifier and we're going to change the material offset. Now what this is going to do is change the color of our solidify modifier into the color of our second material. So we'll hit one and we've already got our line started. I'm going to go to rendered mode real quick and you can see we have this funky shading thing going on. What we can do to fix that is just go back to our thickness and adjust it a little bit. That's a bit better. Now, what do I mean earlier when I said essentially what we're doing is cutting this in half? So if I take my thickness and I expand it out a ridiculous amount, and let's zoom out real quick, and I'm going to click my light, transform it around by hitting G, and bring it inside of this outline. You can see that it's lit as if we were inside of this sphere, except there's no front part of the sphere. So we have the sphere on the inside, and we have this little one on the outside. This method does have its drawbacks though. If you have more complex geometry, sometimes it doesn't like to play super nice with it, and I can find that it's quite difficult to stylize. There are people who do very advanced non-photorealistic shaders, who go in and they mess around with the normals to get all kinds of fancy tapering, but I typically don't feel like doing that when I'm adding 2D lines to 3D objects. It's a little bit much. But they also have the benefit of working with a lot of different game engines. So if you're looking into doing 3D models for video games, then using the inverted hull method is probably the way to go. So let's move on to our next method. That's gonna be freestyle lines. The way that you make freestyle lines is pretty simple as well. I'm going to create a new UV sphere. And now that we have this new UV sphere, I'm going to go to modifiers, subdivision surface, and let's shade smooth. The way that you access freestyle lines is by going into your render properties up here, checking this little box that says freestyle. And now your freestyle line should be activated when you render. So I'm going to do a little quick render. And now we have an outline around our mesh, but we can do way more with this than just having this straight outline. If you want to mess around with the properties of our freestyle line, what we can do is go here to our output properties, 
or view layer properties, sorry. We can go here and we can start to adjust the different qualities of our freestyle line. For crease angle, I like to turn this down to about 70, somewhere between 70 or 60 usually works for me, but it's gonna change depending on what your mesh looks like and the kind of look that you're going for. If we want to change what gets a freestyle line on it, so let's say I duplicate this sphere and I only want the lines to be on this original sphere and not this new sphere. If I go to render this, you're gonna notice that the lines are on both. So how do we control that? The way that we control it is by using what's called collections. So collections are kind of like folders inside of Blender, but they do a little bit more than what folders do in 2D art programs. When we use collections, we can adjust how they render in our different render layers. We're not gonna to get too much into the specifics of how that works, but here we're just gonna show how they can affect your freestyle lines. The way I create a new collection is by selecting an object or multiple objects if I want to, but this time I'm just gonna use the original sphere. I hit M, I hit new collection, and I'm gonna change this to lines hit OK, and now it's in a new collection. And now what we can do is go back to our properties for our freestyle lines, and we can check this little box that says collection. Now we can scroll down a little bit more and hit this collections bin right here. We can choose our line collection, and now when we go to render, it should only render our freestyle lines on anything that's inside of our collection. There we go. Now, what if we want to give this a bit more texture? Well, we can start messing around with freestyle line modifiers. So in our freestyle line set properties, we can hit this drop down menu at the bottom to get our freestyle line style. We can go over to thickness. I'm going to change this thickness to two instead of three, which is set to at default. And now we can add a thickness modifier by hitting this menu right here that says add modifier. We can choose a noise modifier. I'm gonna adjust the amplitude of the noise to be 0.8. And now I'm gonna hit render and there we go. Now we have this wavy sort of line going on. I like the look of that. One big downside of using freestyle lines though is their post-processing effect, which means two things. Firstly, you can't see your freestyle lines in your scene as you're working. You can only do that after you've rendered. Secondly, you'll run into the problem of them drawing over top of your grease pencil lines. Now, let me explain what that means real quick. I'm gonna create a new grease pencil object. Let's create blank. Let's move it here so it's between our camera and our circle or our sphere. We're gonna go into draw mode. I'm gonna select this circle. I'm gonna create a new material, create a new layer. And now let's draw this quick circle in right between our camera and our sphere. And let's render that out and see what the result is. And you'll notice that our freestyle line has just drawn straight through our grease pencil line. We do not want that. Why that's doing that is because Blender doesn't really respect grease pencil objects as actual 3D objects. It doesn't treat them in the same way as mesh objects, meaning when freestyle lines are done, it will just draw over top of them because it is a post-processing effect. It's done after all the other processing is done and is just plastered right on top of the whole scene. So if you want to use freestyle lines in a composition with grease pencils, you're gonna have to do some additional compositing. And it's very much possible. Worthy Kids for his series Big Top Burger used freestyle lines for doing the outlines of his 3D objects. So you can definitely get some really nice results. It's just gonna take a bit more work than what I would personally want to do most of the time. So to get around this, let's check out our next option for creating 2D lines on 3D objects. That option is going to be the grease pencil line art modifier. Let's create a, or a new UV sphere. Do the usual, but this time we're gonna add a new grease pencil object. And we're gonna set this grease pencil object up like normal. We're gonna to go to our materials, add a new material, go to our layers, add a new layer. But this time we're gonna to go to our modifiers and we're gonna add a line art modifier, which is under the generate category. We add our line art modifier and we're going to set the source type to object. Then we select the source object, which is going to be 
our sphere right here. We're gonna change the target layer to our first layer, the only layer. And we're gonna change our material to our only material. And what we've done is we've drawn lines over top of this grease pencil object. And this is very similar to the way that freestyle lines do it, except it does it entirely within our blender scene. So if I turn my camera real quick, you'll notice that these lines are attached to my 3D object. If I want to move my camera around and keep my lines, I can do that. So let's turn on, well, we've already got auto keying on because I was doing some stuff earlier. Let's move my camera around a little bit. Let's go to frame 90. Let's move my camera. Let's rotate it, bring it over here, perfect. Let's change the length of my seam to 90 frames. And now if I hit the enter button, you can see it moving between there, but it's running a bit slow. What we can do to speed that up is called baking. This is essentially just going to have Blender run through each frame and save the data of where those lines should be at each individual frame. I select my grease pencil object again. I go to my line art modifier. I hit this baking drop down menu at the bottom of it and I click bake line art. And now it's baking my line art. It's gonna save all that information. So next time I go to run it, it'll run super smooth. Now that my line art is all baked, it runs at real time, perfect, just fine. And like any other grease pencil object, I can always go back and I can change the color of my line art by adjusting the materials. I can use different modifiers on my grease pencil object. First, add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm gonna turn that up to three. And then I'm gonna add a noise modifier on top of that. If you watch some of my other tutorials, you know that I love using noise modifiers for doing line boiling on grease pencil objects. Well, I'd usually use the position to do that line boiling. Instead, I'm gonna use the thickness. So I'm gonna turn position all the way down, turn thickness to somewhere around 0.3, and then let's turn the noise scale up to 0.2 or something like that. Maybe we turn the thickness up a bit more and you can start to see that line boiling. And we can get that line boiling effect on 3D lines on 3D objects. Now, while all these methods work very well for a lot of different contexts, they don't do everything for me. Like, it's very difficult to do certain kinds of tapering and inserting shapes on these. So I'm gonna try out one more method that I use all the time, and that is the Fresnel line method. So I'm back in my camera view. I'm going to get rid of my grease pencil object. I don't need that anymore. And now, instead of messing around with modifiers and junk, we're gonna start messing around with shaders. So I'm gonna go to my shader editor by dragging up on my timeline, hitting this drop down menu right here and going to shader editor, selecting my sphere and creating a new shader our new material. So we have this principled BSCF right here. And what we want to do is add lines on top of all of our shading. So I'm gonna move this over here and we're gonna get a shader to RGB. Now this is gonna tell you that immediately, this is something that only works in Eevee. A lot of the other methods that we had for getting 2D lines will work in cycles as well if you wanna get more accurate lighting calculation but this one will only work in Eevee because the shader to RGB node only works in Eevee. So I just place this between my shader and my output. Now this is converted into RGB information, which is gonna be useful for us when we start adding our lines. We're gonna add a mix RGB, take that mix RGB, and then we're gonna add a Fresnel node. Now, a Fresnel node, basically what it does is calculate where light should be bouncing off of your object. So I'm just gonna plug this into our preview real quick. And you can see, it's essentially just drawing lines around the edge of our object right here. And it changes where those lines are depending on where we move in 3D space. So if I turn on overlays, you can see I'm moving my camera around, but all the time these lights are still facing me. Now this is very useful for getting a 2D line effect, but in order to make it more like a line and less like this gradient thing, we're gonna have to add a color ramp. So let's take a ramp, plug that color ramp into there, and we're gonna set it to constant. We're gonna turn down this right here, and now this is where our line should end up. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug it into 
the factor of our mix RGB, which I'm going to plug back into our output. And now what we're going to do is change the second color in our mix RGB to black. Now we have 2D lines on a 3D object. And this loads incredibly fast because you're not calculating any new geometry, you're just using shaders. There are downsides to this method as well. Like for some more complex geometry, especially things with very large flat planes, it doesn't work very well. So for an example, let me get out a Suzanne here. Monkey. Select our object and we're gonna link our materials. There we go, copy material to selected. And now if I turn off overlays and I start moving around, you can see that things are kind of blinking in and out. Make that a little bit easier. Let's set it to shade smooth. And the shading's still a bit weird. So I turn here and you can see across the bridge of the nose, there are these weird black spots. We can make that a little bit less of a problem if we had a subdivision surface and turn that up a little bit. But as you can see, the shading's still not perfect. Well, I really like this look. I think it's a very interesting look, kind of comic book-esque. It might not work for everyone, and it might not work in every context, but I think it's very useful if you're trying to get 2D lines on top of your 3D images, your 3D objects. Now, let's get some more interesting examples of what we can do with this. So I'm gonna mess around with a little displacement here. So I'm gonna create a new plane. Let's turn overlays on again. Let's scale this plane up a bit. Let's go in edit mode, subdivide it, turn it up to 10 subdivisions, subdivide it again, turn it up to, let's say four, four will be fine. Go back out of edit mode. We're gonna add a new modifier to this plane. That's going to be a subdivision surface modifier. Let's turn that up to three. And now we're gonna add a displacement, create new. Now let's click this right here to get to our materials menu. Let's change it to Musgrave texture. And let's change that to Vernoli F1, F2. Let's turn up the scale a good deal. I think that two is fine. Go to our colors menu. Let's turn down the contrast. I want to place this camera a little bit better. So I'm going to go outside of my camera view. I'm going to get my camera to a place that I want it to be like here-ish. I like that. I'm going to go to view, the align view, and go to align active camera to view. There we go. Now our camera is right here. Shade it smooth. And now we go into our shader menu like we had before, and let's create a new shader. I don't really like the look of this principled BSDF on here, so I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to add a diffuse. So take that diffuse, we're gonna plug into the output by hitting O. Just so you know, you guys should turn on Node Wrangler if you haven't, it makes it so much faster to work inside of the shader nodes. We're gonna create a new shader to RGB node, plug that right here, get a color ramp, plug it right here, set that color ramp to be constant, so it's a straight cutoff, bring it down. Let's move the light around. I don't like where the light is placed in this scene. So I wanna bring the light over here. Honestly, this might be a context where it's better to use a sun. Let's go back to this plane that we have set up. And now what we can do is get a mix RGB, put it right here. Now this is one of my favorite things when using color ramps. So usually if you're gonna be changing the color on color ramps, let me take this out of the chain real quick. What you have to do is click these little finagly sliders right here, click this color option right here, and then go and change that individually with the different colors. Not fun, not fun stuff. You can still get the colors you want. It just takes a little bit longer than I like. So what I like to do instead is use a mix RGB and then use this color ramp info as the factor for that. So instead of plugging into color one, I plug it into the factor. And now you're gonna notice everything's flat. And that's because these colors right here in my mix RGB are set to be the same. Now, what I'm gonna to do to make this even easier, cause I can still go in here and click this, move that around and get my color. I don't wanna do that though. I'm going to hit shift A, RGB, and now we got an RGB node. Perfect. We're gonna move this up to the top cause I like them up high. We're gonna plug that into our color one 
duplicate it by hitting Shift D and plug this one into our color too. And now we can move these around completely independent of everything else. So I can set this to be here and set this to be here. Now we want to start adding 2D lines to this 3D object. So we're going to use the grease pencil method because it's one of my favorites. Now we're going to create a new grease pencil object, set it up like we did last time. New material, new layer, and new line art modifier. Set it to object instead of collection. Grab our plane object. Target layer is our only layer. Material is our only material. Give it a second and there we go. Now we have 2D lines on our 3D object. And I want to change this so it's more orangish with our lines. I like that orangey look. So we're going to change our material color, bring it here. There we go. I like that look. And as you notice, like regular grease pencil objects, there's this gradient happening between where it's furthest from the light and where it's closest to the light. So even our grease pencil lines are picking up light information, which is one advantage of using this grease pencil method. So these are some different methods of using 2D lines on 3D objects. If you like this video, I hope you check out the rest of my channel. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. If you want to see more tutorials in the future, please subscribe. It's a great way to support me. And if there's anything that I missed in working in this, I would love for your suggestions and advice down below as well. Thanks for watching. I wish you luck in your Blender 2D journey. Bye.